Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Bring on 2019. <laughs> I hope you've had a lovely start to the year and indeed a lovely start to the morning. I wanted to just um, warmly welcome you into 2019 and um, to really hope that you've had a time to you know, put the pause button uh, on for a minute and just take some time maybe to reflect and think about what 2018 has meant for you and what you hope 2019 will be for you. In my family, this last week, incidentally, has been um, a rather a chilly, fested last week and actually thought that um, I would share a couple of insights with you. Uh, but first, let me show you some plants in my backyard that speak a little bit about the culture that I come from. So I'm just going to turn this around. Do you see that plant over there? There you go. Can you guess what that plant is? It grows very abundantly in our backyard. In fact, there are about two or three of these uh, plants that uh, seem to just thrive in our backyard and I don't really want them to be that big and that massive, but they tend to be there. Hello, if you're joining me. Do you know what this plant is? Do you have any idea what it is? Well, I'll tell you what it is and please let me know what are you doing for the new year if you're watching this. Ooh. That is a curry leaf plant, right? We use this in our curries. It just provides the most aromatic, um, lovely enhancement to a curry. Now, incidentally, I was also given this week, let's see if I can show you this little plant over here, which is a chili plant and it's got some of my revitalization colors there, red. Uh, I also gave one of my children who seems to like chili a, a lot, their very own box of chili sauces, about six or six to eight, I think, chili sauces. And um, every meal now uh, is like an exotic transportation to a different place. So I wanna tell you a story about my family. Good morning, Kim, happy new year. New Year to you. When I was very, very little, uh, I, I probably was still in nappies. And I don't know whether this is a true memory or whether it's just a story that has been told to me that I remember it so vividly. But when I was little, my grandmother uh, would actually intentionally start us off in chili eating training, right? So um, <clears throat> my heritage is, um, my father is Chinese. Uh, on my mother's side, however, we've got a real kaleidoscope of cultures and one of which um, comes with the culture of eating really hot curries. And I have this memory that uh, myself uh, and another child that my grandmother was minding uh, would be you know, sort of sat on uh, concrete ground. <laughs> we were growing up in Asia and she'd make these curry balls and she would just feed them really fast and furious to us, right? And the idea was that the younger that we got exposed to curry, the more our tolerance would build up. And I'm not sure whether or not the speed at which at which these fireballs were delivered were meant to you know, kind of just override your sense of uh, panic that some hot stuff was going through your mouth uh, or, or, or whether it was kind of part of the whole thrill of this is how you eat curry right uh, but nevertheless there was this building up of tolerance and I kind of had this vivid um, vivid memories around uh, the family table that uh, you know when uncles and aunts would come over there'd be like this you know uh, competition or this like let's just see how how good your chili tolerance is now right and they would be like upping the ante all the time and you know it would just get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and I think by the time I was a young adult um, the pride sets in and even though you're dying on the inside you never admit that the curry is too hot for you <laughs> um, and I have a feeling that that building up of that tolerance uh, to eat curries I mean what was the point I have a feeling that my grandmother maybe saw that as part of 
are not necessarily uh, initiation to family, but there was a long-term view to this, that if you couldn't eat curries, you probably wouldn't really enjoy yourself around the family table. Um, you know, you wouldn't really be a part of that culture. Uh, you, you'd lose a little bit maybe of the traditional side of where you came from. Uh, it was just something that families did. And so if you couldn't do that, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to participate or be a part of that bigger picture. Now, in my own life, uh, I may have tried to feed my kids chili when they were little. I probably didn't do it very consistently. Uh, but I am grateful and thankful that my grandmother did set me off on that process. Now, the thing about eating chili, this is what you need to know. When your mouth is burning and stinging, right, what's the first thing that you want to reach out for when you, you've got something hot in your mouth? What's the first thing that you think of? You probably reach for a glass of cold, icy water, right? <clears throat> However, that's probably not what you want to do. You don't want to reach for water. Now, your second option is to just stop. So this morning, I actually thought that seeing as we had a bit of a chilly theme, I felt like, okay, my first meal for 2019 was actually going to be a hot chili fest uh, breakfast. And I picked up this really spicy ramen noodle to eat. Hello there. I've got a second person uh, watching here. Happy New Year to you too. Now, it looked lethal. It looked like hell in a bowl. And I wasn't quite sure if I was going to eat it, but I did. So the second thing you might do when you're thinking about eating chili is you might actually stop. You might think, what's the point? Uh, I can live with that chili. This is really agony. Why am I putting myself through it? Now, in my case, I can't stop eating chili. Right? Eating chili would be giving up a part of me. Eating Giving up chili would be uh, giving up sort of a part of my culture, my background. I couldn't participate in these, you know, warrior curry eating fests anymore. So with that, I'd just like to encourage you to think about 2019, about when we think about burning out. Uh, what are the things that in your life in 2018 seemed like the most intuitive, instinctive thing to do when you felt like you were on fire and maybe starting to burn out from the fire that maybe it was instinctive to do, such as like drinking water, but maybe it didn't help at all. Maybe it even made it worse. Well, I'd like you to actually reflect on that and think about, well, maybe do something different then. All right, because... My whole theme of unstoppable is not the feeling that I am invincible, not the thought that I'm invincible, far from it. Unstoppable for me actually means that I want to keep doing what I want to do, much like eating curry, because there's a bigger vision for it, for every person that uh, I can help to endure and to keep doing the things that they love and they're passionate about that doesn't consume them, is a family, is a society, is a community, um, is a whole a whole group of people that benefit as well. So being unstoppable, number one, what were the things that you thought were helpful for you uh, because other people told you to do it or because it's just something that you always did, but it really didn't help you to recharge and replenish. Try something different. And the second thing is when you think about avoidance, are there some things that in your life, in your world or in your work or in your caring of others that it's actually really, really meaningful for you, but it's now really scared you because what happened to you in 2018 is giving you um, anxiety that it may happen again. Well, can I encourage you that in burnout work, what we don't want to do is to stop the meaningful work. In fact, we want to increase the meaningful stuff. What we want to do is to reduce the things that drain us, that hinder us, uh, that, that derail us from getting on with what we want to need to do. So I hope that you'll um, have a, a wonderful new year and a, a press the pause button for a little bit just to contemplate some of the stuff that I've been talking about and then be recharged, relaunched and unstoppable for 2019. See you later.